let's begin our class today, our mathem modern mathematics second class. Okay, so the topic today is more to okay, um, uh, is uh, more towards consumer mathematics. What does it mean, consumer mathematics? That means mathematics that apply to our daily life when we consume something, like when you buy stuff or all this, lah, especially relating to money. Lah. So consumer mathematics, uh, we will study about insurance and taxation. Lah. Okay, chapter 3 and chapter 4. So now you look at the textbook. Okay, you look at the textbook. So the first one is insurance. Now, what is insurance? Basically, is uh, insurance is something like if you have a, if you are in an accident, you uh, have a loss, then uh, the insurance company can compensate you lah, can prove uh, can uh, give you the money uh, equivalent to the amount you have lost lah. So what is the meaning of risk and importance of insurance? So risk basically means the possibility of a disaster that cannot be avoided lah. Risk of you having an accident, risk of you uh, breaking your leg, risk of you, uh, how to say, uh, uh, fire in the house, uh, something like that lah. There's always a risk lah for everything. That's why to to lower this risk and also to ensure that you are compensated, we have to buy insurance lah. Okay, so the concept of insurance is like this. Okay, policy holder means us. Okay, we uh, buy, purchase the insurance. Okay, we hold the policy. That's why we are called a policy holder. We pay the premium. Premium means like the amount of money that you pay for the insurance lah. Okay, and then the insurance company Okay, and then we'll pay the compensation to us. Uh. So you look at the info bulletin. Insurance company, party that agrees to pay compensation for the losses of the agreed terms. Policy holder, which is us, like insurance owner, the individual who will claim and receive compensation for the losses. All right. Uh, you only get, uh, you get sponsored for living, you only get sponsored for dying or injured. Yeah, yeah. Technically, it's only after dying or injured. Lah. Okay, not living. Lah. Okay. Unless it's like maybe you get into a okay, maybe your property lah, ah, your property kena fire ah, banje ah, or this lah, your uh, car uh, broke broke already ah, broken down, all this then you still can receive your compensation lah. Okay, so insurance contract is a policy and an evidence of an uh, agreement made between insurance company and policy holder. Premium amount of money payable by the policy holder to the insurance company. Okay, so. Uh, amount of compensation payable to the policy holder is the amount of so, or loss suffered. That means if I lose, if I lost ten thousand ringgit, maybe because my car caught on fire, then the insurance company will also pay you ten thousand ringgit lah. Definitely, they cannot pay you less or more than that because to avoid you loss and also avoid you to getting the profit lah. This is what we call a principle of indemnity. So you see. Uh, will not allow the policy holder to gain profit. Lah. Okay, principle of indemnity, insurance company will pay compensation to a policy holder in the occurrence of a loss insured for an amount not exceeding the loss incurred subject to the sum insured. Okay, now we have two types of, uh, two big types of insurance. One is life insurance, one is general insurance. Life insurance means like basically it's relating to your life. Lah. So you will receive the compensation when you already died, uh, when you already died or loss of ability, maybe you cannot walk already, or critical illness lah, okay? Provide financial protection to family members who depend on the policy holder, when the policy holder dies, okay? So, the second type is general insurance. That means basically everything else besides life insurance, we call general insurance lah. You have motor insurance relating to your vehicles, all this lah. Fire insurance, med medical and health insurance, personal accident insurance, travel insurance, okay? So, motor insurance, okay, we have four different policies for motor insurance, okay. Comprehensive is the one with the widest coverage. Act is the one with the lowest coverage, lah, okay. So, uh, okay, how should I explain? Okay, let's say, okay, the first coverage is liability to third party due to injury and death, okay. So, uh, liability to third party due to injury and death, all the policies cover, okay? Loss of property suffered by third party, um, the act doesn't cover, the other three will cover lah. Loss to own vehicle due to accidental fire or theft, only third party fire and theft and also comprehensive will cover lah. Loss and damage to own vehicle due to accident, only comprehensive will cover lah. So you look at this example, 
Okay, this example explains very clearly. Okay, look at the info bulletin first. The first party is the driver or the policy the policy holder. Lah. If we purchase the insurance, we are the first party. Second party will be insurance company. The third party is any other individuals that are involved in an accident caused by the driver, excluding the passenger. That means, let's say your car crash with another car. So the driver of the other car is a third party. Lah. But let's say you in your car, you have uh, your passenger, maybe your uh, whoever, lah, your family members, they are not subjected to the insurance. Lah. You understand what I mean? That means if they suffer any injury or what, it's your own tanggung jawab, lah. it's your own responsibility. The insurance cannot cover that, can only cover for you and the, uh, the other driver. Okay, so a uh, comprehensive policy provides a thorough protection compared to the other three policies as above. The similarity of this policy is, is to give a protection, uh, excluding the claims by the driver and passengers such as injury and death. For example, Agus was dro uh, driving his car with his friend Faisal as the passenger. Agus lost control and knocked into another car driven by Davy. Agus, Faisal and Davy were injured and Agus and Davy's car were damaged. Okay, so you all understand? Huh? Okay. okay, if Agus insured his car under the comprehensive policy, this policy will cover injury and car damage claimed by the third party who is Davy and the loss of damage of Agus' car. Okay, however, the medical costs incurred by Agus and Faisal will not be covered. Okay, so you see, so let's say, okay, remember, uh, Agus is the first party. Okay, passenger Faisal will be included. Uh, Davy is the third party. So if Agus purchase comprehensive policy, okay, let's say um, Davy got injury and death, the insurance will cover. Devi punya car rosak, also insurance will cover. Uh, Agus punya car rosak, also will cover. Loss and damage to own vehicle. Okay, sorry, this is fire or theft. When the car can stolen already or fire already, then they will cover. When because of accident, then um, the vehicle also uh, damaged already. That's why also under the comprehensive policy. But if you only purchase third party fire and theft, that means the insurance won't cover the uh, damage to own vehicle. Lah. Okay. If you purchase the third party, then uh, kalau fire, other fire, other theft, uh, it won't cover the uh, it won't cover the amount loss lah. And then if you purchase act only, so uh, Davy punya losses to the car, the uh, prop, uh, loss of property suffered by Davy. Uh, Agus has to pay himself, lah, okay, because it's not covered by the insurance. Okay, so this is the first one, lah, motor insurance. The second one is fire insurance. Basically, the same thing, lah, it's just that it's a fire on the property, lah, okay. Provides coverage against damage caused by fire, lightning, and explosion that occur at home or business premises, okay. Compensation will be paid by the insurance company to recover policy order financial position, lah. Okay, uh, all this lah. Uh, policy holder may incorporate additional coverage such as hurricane, flood, riot, and others into the existing fire policy. Okay, the third one is medical and health insurance, basically re relating uh, to your health. Yeah? Okay, so hospitalization, surgical insurance, critical illness, disability income, hospital income. Okay, personal accident provides coverage in the occurrence that the policy holder suffers a bodily injury disability or death resulting directly from accident that means because of accident lah, not because of medical illness yeah so it's different than life insurance and also this medical and health insurance okay personal accident that means that maybe you fall down from the building and then you suffered heavy injuries or maybe uh, you pass away that's why uh, this will be under personal accident insurance lah. Okay, the fifth one is travel insurance. That means wherever, wherever you go, lah, maybe you travel overseas or what, then you have accident. And this is where it will be covered by travel insurance. Lah. Okay, whether you uh, travel by land, air or sea. Lah. Okay, so that's all for travel insurance. Now, there is also a, another, like how to say, section, we call it group insurance. Lah, okay, so group insurance provides coverage to a group of individuals, especially employees uh, in a company or pupils in school. Lah. Okay. Group insurance for organization, that means like norm uh, normally when organizers, they want to host a big event, they will also purchase a group insurance like, in case like, anything happen, maybe a, a, an accident, ke, riot, ke, or don't know, like, loss of 
uh, property or what. That's why to ensure that uh, you are safe. Lah. That's why they purchase the insurance lah, before hosting this big event. Maybe something like a protest or uh, maybe like a... Hmm, Maybe like a Gotong Royal activity, a major Gotong Royal activity or so. Mm -hmm. Okay. The other one is group insurance for pupils. So the same thing, like pupils in the school also. Uh, yeah, in case of death, paralysis, disability, that's why Ministry of Education implemented a protection scheme which is called Takafu Pelajar Sekolah Malaysia, lah, TPSM. Okay. Reasons you should get an insurance, everyone knows really. Lah. Financial aid lah, to your family. Okay, managing life expenses, you receive the money, ma, okay? Paying for high medical expenses as compensation for losses incurred. All right, now you move on. Okay, now we have to calculate, uh, how to say, we have to learn how to calculate, really. Lah. So this is where all the formula come in, really, lah, which is quite, um, okay, brace yourself, lah, okay? Prepare because it's going to be a bit uh, complicated, really, okay? So first of all, you just um, you just analyze this table. You have your policy holder, policy holder and spouse and your family lah. Okay, Asia, Europe, different destination, number of days. Okay, uh, number of days. Let's say you see, uh, is it will be one day until eighteen days. More than eighteen days, then you should buy annual premium. That means every year you pay like that lah. Okay. So what are the factors that influence the difference in premium for the travel insurance? So you see, why all these number different? Why the uh, amount of the premium different? It's because, you see, you can say destination, la, duration, la, number of days, or also the number of people. La. Is it the policyholder, policyholder and spouse or family? Okay. Why is the premium higher for a longer travel period? Because the risk is higher. La. Increase the probability of loss to the policyholder. Uh, you, if you go abroad for more days, that means your risk is higher. La. Okay. Shahir work as a photographer re requires him to visit many countries in Europe. So you focus on the Europe. La. Shahir only, right? That's why it's policyholder only, la, one person. Then you focus on the Europe. Uh, which insurance for 12 to 15 days? Okay. Which insurance is suitable for Shahir to buy in relation to his job? Okay. You see, within a year, he go to the country 12 to 15 days. But within a year, he will do this uh, job. He will do his job. Lah. So which one is more suitable? Of course, it's the premium. Okay, 280. Because you see, if you 12 to 15 days for one country, you go like this. If you go to 10 countries, then you have to pay like 1,270 ringgit. Eh. But then if you go to 10 countries and you pay annual premium, then you only pay 280. So of course, it's better. Lah. It's economical lah, or cheaper. Lah. Can you understand? Okay, very good. This one is more to reading and understanding. Lah. Okay. Later, the class at night will be more to yeah, calculation, all those ready. Lah. Okay. How to calculate a premium for life insurance? Okay. Your first formula is here. So, life insurance. Life insurance, your formula is premium. That means how much you pay lah, equals to face value over RMX, the rate lah, times the premium rate per RMX, per RMX. Okay, you see, you look at this formula, then you also like very confused. Huh? What, is, what is all this? Never mind. We look at the example. Okay. Annual premium scheduled per RM1000. So this RM1000, that means like how to say, uh, it's like the rate. Lah. So RM1000 ready. You know like, this is RMX, that means RM1000 ready. Lah. Uh, okay. RMX is 1000. So, face value of a yearly renewable item uh, term insurance offered by Sharika Insurance XYZ. Okay. So, you see, male, female, smoker, non smoker. Okay. Why does the premium rate increase as the age increase? Okay. So, you see, when the age increase, why does the uh, premium rate increase? The answer is premium rate increase with increasing age because life expectancy of each person decreases with age. Lah. That means your risk is dying is higher already. Lah. For a smoker, you see, smoker 2.72, here baru 2.12. It's, uh, it's higher because probability of a smoker being exposed to illness is higher. Lah. You have a higher risk of getting illness lah, if you smoke. Lah. Okay, it's unhealthy, right? Uh, okay, now we have to calculate already. Lah. Okay, calculate the annual premium for each of the following situation. Okay, so you look at the whiteboard. You look at the whiteboard, I've already written down the formula. Lah. Okay, 
So Mr. Guan wants to buy an insurance policy worth 100,000. So that means your face value is 100,000. Nah. He is 39 years old, healthy, and a non-smoker. So you focus. 39 years old, male, non-smoker. Okay, non-smoker, 2.49 is the rate. Okay, then you look how they calculate. So you look at the whiteboard. Basically, you just substitute everything inside. Lah. 100,000 is your face value. Just now, the rate, we already know the rate RMX is 1,000. Okay, and then the premium rate based on the table is 2.49. Nah. That's why his annual premium will be 249 ringgit. Now you look at Roman 2, the probability of a smoker being exposed to Ill, uh, sorry, not that one, sorry. Madame Shapuva is 36 year old, healthy and a non-smoker. So you focus lah, female, 36 year old, non-smoker. The rate is 1.5, okay? 1.50, okay. Wants to buy an insurance policy worth 250,000 and wants to add on a critical illness policy. Ooh, banyak oh. Okay, so with a coverage of 30% of basic face value and premium rate is 1.77 per 1,000 based on. Okay, so you slowly, you slow down, you slowly analyze first the amount upper. So, maksud dia, it, she wants this insurance and then she wants to add on another critical illness policy. Okay, so you calculate this one first lah. Okay, to be, to avoid like getting too confused. Okay. You calculate this one. So the same thing, 250,000 face value, RMX 1,000, and then premium rate just now we get what? 1.5 over here, okay? So you already know 375 for this basic one. Okay, now you see what she wants. 30% of basic face value. That means your face value just now 250,000, 30% is 75,000. That means she wants to buy another 75,000 for her critical illness policy. Rate already given, RMX also given. Uh, then you just substitute inside and then you get this one. Lah. So the total is 507.75 cents. Can you understand? Is it too confusing? Okay, now this one live, uh, this one is life insurance, so must be okay. Ah, I need motor insurance lah. The the the, the what lah? Motor insurance is the pain already lah. Okay. Motor insurance lagi complicated. Okay. So, motor insurance, you have act, you have third party, you have third party fire and theft, and then you have comprehensive. Okay, now let's look at the details first, okay? So, you see, depending only on the engine capacity of vehicle, act and third party. Okay, for comprehensive, uh, sorry, for third party fire and theft, premium rate is 75% of comprehensive policy basic premium. That means third party sini 75% of comprehensive. Okay, look at the whiteboard, yeah. 75% comprehensive. Depending on the engine capacity and the market value of the vehicle when you want to insure it. So, at third party, hanya only engine capacity. C, 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 C. Tapi comprehensive dengan third party, fire and theft, you also have the market value. So let's look at example. Uh, okay, lai liao. The hard one really, this one. Okay. So this is the entire table that shows the tariff. Lah. Basically, this is your engine capacity. Alright, your comprehensive policy, the rate berapa, third party berapa. Okay. The formula to calculate the basic premium of the comprehensive policy for Peninsula Malaysia, the basic premium is rate for the first 1,000 ringgit plus 26 ringgit for each 1,000 or part thereof on value exceeding the first. That means for comprehensive, uh, comprehensive Peninsula Malaysia, Peninsula, you will have your rate for First 1,000, okay, rate for 1,000, and then you will have your 26 ringgit RM26 for every, uh, for each 1,000, RM26 each one, each RM1,000. Okay, ini peninsula. The other one, Sabah Sarawak. Okay, Sabah Sarawak, you also have the rate for first 1,000 and that is 20.3. 20.3. 
rate for RM1000 and then you have RM20.3 times each RM1000. Okay? So, this is the how you calculate comprehensive, okay? We slowly go one by one, looking at the example, okay? Slowly go one by one. Encik Ramli owns and uses a proton exora in Peninsula Malaysia. So, you focus here lah. Okay? The information of the car is as follow. Sum insured 60,000. Age of vehicles, 5 years. Engine capacity, 1,600 cc. NCD, 25%. What does it mean, NCD? No claim discount means will be issued if no claim is made against your policy within the period. Lah. As far as premium payable can be reduced by your NCD, you will lose your entire NCD when a personal, okay, that means of your or continuous experience without claim. Lah. That means NCD, you can, uh, that means if you don't get into like an accident like that, lah, okay, then you can, you will have your NCD and then you can, uh, you will minus lah. That means you pay lesser lah because you already have your NCD. Uh, yeah, that means that people did not claim the insurance from you lah. You don't have accident. That's why you can minus your NCD lah. Okay, now mind, we just focus on this one. So we have to calculate comprehensive policy, third party fine and theft and also third party. Okay, slowly. We always start with comprehensive because it's the most complex. Okay, so you see. First 1,000, rate for first 1,000, okay? Berapa? Tengok. A vehicle in Peninsula Malaysia, 1,600cc. So, you see, the rate here is 305.50 lah. Okay? 305.50. And then, 26 ringgit for each uh, 1,000cc lah. The remaining uh, 1,000 balance lah, sorry. So, just now, your sum insured is 60,000. Your first 1,000 is already this one, okay? So, you have 59,000 left, okay? So, 26 times 59, you get 1,534, okay? Understand, yeah? I repeat, rate for the one, first 1,000 is this one, refer to the table. After that, you have 59,000 left. So, 59 times 26, you get 1,534. So your basic premium is plus together 1839.5. Then remember to minus your NCD. So NCD 25% times this one, you get 459.88. And then you minus lah. So you only have to pay this amount lah. Understand? Now, comprehensive already, you get this amount 1839. So what you do? What is the basic premium for third party fine and theft? 75% of comprehensive. Okay, 75% of comprehensive. Then, okay, you times 1839.5, so you get 1379.63 lah, okay? And then you calculate NCD again, and then you minus lah, so you have to pay this one only lah for third-party financial. Okay, how about third-party policy? Remember, just now they say third-party policy only depends on, act and third-party only depends on the CC, on the engine capacity only. So you just have to pay third-party policy 135 lah, okay? You pay 135. And then you calculate your NCD and then you minus. So you have to pay this one lah for third party. Understand? So you see comprehensive is the most complex lah. Because you have your rate for 1,000 and then you have 26 times the number of each 1,000. Okay? But of course comprehensive is the best lah because you have so, it covers so much. Okay? Of course it will be the most expensive but it covers also a lot more area. Okay? So that's all for motor insurance. Okay, now you see. Uh, besides that motor insurance, we also have a few things we call deductible and co-insurance. This concept we have to introduce to you. Okay, so you see, uh, in this example, the loss you incurred is 5,500, but insurance company can only pay you 5,300 because you will have to pay 200 yourself. So this 200 is called deductible lah. 200 you have to pay yourself okay so 
Remember, when that in the future you are buying a new insurance, you must read the contract carefully. Read each word carefully. You understand the detail. If you don't understand, always ask your insurance agent. Okay, it's their duty to explain to you until you understand. Okay, so deductible and co-insurance. So what is deductible? Deductible is an amount that must be borne by the policyholder before they can make a claim for the insurance company. That means you pay yourself. Normally, of course, the amount will be smaller, lah. Okay, but you still have to pay yourself, lah. Okay, but it's not in the life insurance and personal liability insurance. Okay, for example, Madam Suhaila has purchased motor insurance for a car with a deductible provision of three hundred. That means she has to pay three hundred herself, lah. Okay. During the insurance coverage period, Madam Suhaila suffered three accidents. The losses suffered in March, July, and August were two thousand eight hundred, two hundred fifty, and four hundred. Okay, state whether Madam Suhaila can make a claim for the loss suffered. Yes, yeah, state the claim. Okay, so you see, two thousand eight hundred she lost in March. Okay, can she make a claim? That means can she claim insurance? Yes, but she cannot claim the full amount two thousand eight hundred because remember she has a deductible of three hundred. She cannot pay sendiri three hundred. That's why she can only receive two thousand five hundred. Okay, understand ya? Yeah? March now for July she lost two hundred fifty. Okay, she cannot claim anything from insurance agency because her deductible is three hundred mah. So that means two hundred fifty all she pay herself lah. Ah, four hundred yes she can make a claim. Um, but she only uh gain hundred ringgit from the uh from the policy uh from the insurance agency lah. Okay, three hundred she pay herself lah. Okay, can you understand how does deductible work? Okay, right, deductible is very easy only. Okay. So, uh, in motor insurance, policy holder is responsible for compulsory deductible of 400 if the insured vehicle is driven by an individual who is not named in the policy, who is named in the policy but is also but is under 21 years old and who is the holder of a provisional L driving license or the holder of full driving license of less than two years. Okay. Okay. Now you look, Sherlyn. Okay, Sherlyn has a medical insurance policy with a deductible of. Thirty thousand per year for you, and then an annual limit of three hundred thousand. That means, uh, in one year, your maximum deductible is only three hundred thousand, lah. Okay, so in the first year of an insured period, uh, Sherlyn had been hospitalized for appendix surgery. Treatment cost is eight thousand. Okay, treatment cost is eight thousand. In the following year, Sherlyn underwent heart surgery, and treatment cost was two hundred ten thousand. State the amount borne by Shirley and the amount paid by the insurance company. Okay, so you have to find out the amount Shirley pay herself and also the amount insurance company give lah. Okay, so for the first year, eight thousand saja is lesser than the deductible. Deductible thirty thousand, tapi treatment cost only eight thousand. So she kena bayar sendiri lah the eight thousand. Oh, very scary. Okay, she kena bayar sendiri the eight thousand. In the second year, her surgery two hundred and ten thousand. So Uh, she has to pay the thirty thousand herself, lah, and then the company will give her hundred and eighty thousand. Okay, so total total amount covered by Sherlyn is thirty thousand plus eight eight thousand, which is thirty eight thousand, lah, and then uh the insurance company only give her hundred eighty thousand, lah. Okay, so that is deductible, lah. You pay yourself. Okay. The next one is co-insurance. What is co-insurance? Co-insurance basically is the cost sharing of the loss between insurance company and policyholder. Like maybe um you have to pay twenty percent, insurance com com company pay you eighty percent. Ah okay. So for the co-insurance clause in property insurance, the policyholder is required to insure his property at a certain amount. Okay, at a certain amount based on the percentage of co-insurance determined. Okay. So amount of required insurance. Okay, now we have another formula. Okay, so I have to rub off the board again. This one came out in SMK UJ Twelve Trial Paper. Okay, the fire uh, fire insurance. Uh, I forget which part really. It was paper two lah, but I forget which section. I think it's section B lah. Or was it C? Okay, so you look at the board. So we have fire insurance or uh property insurance like the same thing property. All fire insurance. Now we have a few formulas here as well. Before we move into the formula, first of all, you have to know that uh everyone is required to insure uh insure uh your property at a certain value. Okay, that means let's say your property is 
maybe hundred thousand ringgit. Okay, there is a minimum requirement of how much, uh, how much your uh, amount of insurance you need, lah. Okay, so amount of required insurance required insurance is percentage times percentage times what times the insurable value huh? okay so you have three different possibility based on the situation let's say your um how to say let's say you insured your value at the required insurance that means for example amount of required insurance let's say you have to uh insure your property at fifty thousand ringgit okay fifty thousand and your insured value you may not insured the property at fifty thousand ringgit lah. so this is the safe one lah, your possibility one okay so your compensation insured value equals to required first possibility okay so compensation your loss minus the deductible second possibility if you don't insure the value at the required insurance for example your required insurance here is fifty thousand, but you only insured at twenty thousand. not enough so amount of compensation insured value is less than the required insurance so what is your formula your formula is uh amount okay the compensation okay is your amount of insurance purchase over the amount of required insurance that means insurance you purchase over required insurance times the loss minus the deductible so if you insure your value the same value as required insurance very e automatically, very easy, only loss minus deductible. Okay, but if your insured value is less than the required insurance, you have to use this rate times the loss first, baru you boleh minus deductible. Okay, third one is suffered a total loss. Third possibility is you suffered total loss. What does it mean suffered total loss? That means your entire property burned, already burned down, you lose your entire property. So your compensation will be uh amount of insurance purchase minus the deductible he has so many formula already lah. okay now my we go slowly okay nj ismail wants to buy fire insurance for his house the insurable value of the house is three hundred fifty thousand. so that is the insurable value okay you set the three hundred fifty thousand. okay the Fire insurance policy he wants to buy has a co-insurance provision to insure 80% of his insurable value and a deductible of 2000 Deductible 2000 So you have to find first what is your amount of required insurance. Berapa you must be insured. So you take the 80% times the insurable value 350000 through 180000 So that means you must be insure your a property at 280,000. Can you understand? I scared later, farm. Okay, ah, good. Ah. Okay, then calculate the okay amount in, uh, required insurance. We calculate already. Okay, so now look at the situation. Encik Ismail house caught fire. Amount of loss 25,000. Calculate the amount of compensation that Encik Ismail will receive if, if, if he insures his house at the amount of required insurance. That means he is a good person. He really insured the amount 280,000. Nah. That means it's equal, right? He got fulfilled. He got obey, right? He got fulfilled 280,000. So the which, how do you calculate compensation? Which formula you use? You look at possibility one. Nah. You follow the this one, the first one, okay? Which is the loss, berapa? The loss to 25,000 minus deductible uh, 2,000. That means 2,000 he pay himself, lah. Insurance company give him 23,000 lah. Okay. Can you understand? B Roman 1 means he's a good person lah. He required, he insured the value at the required insurance lah. Okay. Roman 2, he, that means not to say he's a bad person, but he didn't really obey lah. Okay. He didn't insure uh, 280,000. He only insured at a sum of 150,000. That's why it's not enough, right? 
So if not enough, then how much is his compensation? You have to follow the second formula. Compensation will be insurance purchase berapa? 250, uh, 150,000 saja. Over required is 280,000 times your loss 25,000 minus deductible 2,000. So insurance company akan bagi dia 11392.86 ringgit. Okay. And then what is co-insurance penalty? So co-insurance penalty is the original 25,000. Okay. How do you get this 25,000? It's from the loss lah. Okay. The original, the loss minus the amount of compensation you uh, they pay you so that means you see instead of just paying the deductible 2000 you now have to pay 11607.14 you have to pay 11000 eh? because you didn't obey ma. you didn't insure your value at 28280000 uh, ma that's why you have to pay more lah. you have to pay 11607.14 lah your punishment okay ah you look at the situation then determine which formula to use okay okay so c encik is my house has suffered a total loss if he insured his house at a sum of 200000 okay you see now it's total loss so the third formula lah. total loss how insured a sum at uh, 200000 so he insurance purchase 200000 minus his deductible is uh, 2000 so Compensation he will receive is 198,000. So, um, okay, how about health insurance? You see, health insurance, let's say they give you 80 20 co insurance, the setting. So that means 80%, the, the larger percentage will be the insurance agency will cover, lah, and then 20% you pay yourself. Lah, okay, so Madam Chen has a major medical insurance policy, deductible provision 500. Okay, co insurance 75 25. So, insurance agency or insurance company pay 75%, she pay 25%. Okay, calculate the cost borne by the insurance company and Madam Chen herself if the medical cost covered by a policy is 20,600. So, very easy only. Medical cost after deductible 20,100, uh, the insurance company will pay 75%, which is 15075. Lah. How about Madam Chen? She pay 25%. This one, remember to plus the deductible because deductible 500 ringgit you pay yourself also. So you will pay 5525. Okay. Very easy lah this part. Okay. Um, okay, this one is nothing too much lah. Basically, it's just how you compare lah. Okay, so you read through already. Then also you can easily understand lah which one is a, a better one. Of course, it's XX because... Even though both the annual limit is the same, but annual premium is lower. Lah. That means you pay lesser lah for this one. You pay lesser for XX. Okay. Benefit offered in terms of coverage period, which is whole year round. Uh -huh. No coverage limit for intensive care unit. Because you see, intensive care unit, that means this insurance can, let's say you uh you have to pay 1000 here. So the insurance will cover as charged. Lah. Okay. But YY, you only have a limit of 400. Okay, uh, that's all. Okay, so that's all for insurance. So basically, you have to know the formula for life insurance, uh, uh, life insurance, fire insurance, and also motor insurance. Lah. Can you understand? That's why I also don't quite like this chapter because you have to really memorize a lot of formula. Okay, you have to know where to put which one. Uh, how likely you think this chapter to come out for SPM at least? Um... There's a possibility lah because it comes out in trial ma. It came out in trial uh, one of the uh, subjective question ma paper two. So there's still a possibility lah. Okay. But let's say if you are very weak in maths. If you are weak in maths, mm, how to say? If you are um, weak in maths, you are a student weak in maths. Let's say you really uh, like all these consumer mathematics stuff or you can understand it well then you aim you target lah you train how to do all these questions lah but let's say you are weak in maths and let's say your algebra memang is terrible one okay uh, so and you also cannot understand what is this talking about then you just ignore this one lah okay you have to sacrifice this one lah because your basics in maths is not good enough okay for of course if you want to get a minus and above you have to target also lah this chapter you have to read lah Okay, uh, so make sure your maths, uh, your form 5 syllabus, your other chapters, especially the easy ones like variation and matrices, make sure you know how to do first. Then you only go and learn this chapter, okay? This chapter, not to say it's hard, 
but it's important also lah. It's important, okay? So, this is for this one, uh, insurance. Taxation will be easier because there is less uh, formula. The taxation is always just percentage times amount, percentage times amount only. It's the same thing only, okay? So, let's have a look at taxation, okay? Chapter 4. Taxation is also important because everyone in the future, you have to pay tax, huh? okay? If you avoid tax, you can go to J1, lah. Okay, so taxation. Now, what is tax? Why is it important? So taxation is a process of revenue collection from individuals or company for the use of country. That means the government collect the taxes from the people or company. Lah. Okay, so people pay the tax uh, to the government. Government will develop the country. Lah. Okay, so of course the government has to spend well. Lah, the tax collected, okay, not use it, uh, uh, not use it, uh, not simply use it. Lah. Okay, so... Who is responsible for collecting tax? Inland Revenue Board, IRB, or in Malay, more commonly known as LHDN lah. Okay, Lembaga Hasil Dalaman Negeri lah. Uh, negara, is it? Or Negeri, let me check. LHDN is uh, Dalam Negeri, okay? Lembaga Hasil Dalam Negeri. So, they will collect lah all these taxes. Now, what is the importance? Okay, government, of course, you need your source of income and revenue so that you can build the country and the economy, right? So, source of government revenue because you can govern the country, finance the country's development, redistribute income to address inequality in society. Government policy implementation too. To implement a policy, of course, all these programs, you need uh, money. So, uh, tax can be levied in line with uh, government policy so that, yeah, you see, you can uh, pay a lot of uh, you can have the money to, how to say, carry out the policies as well as you can provide like tax relief. So, uh, for like medical expenses so that this, how to say, uh, like you force people to pay more. That's why they will avoid that in the future. Okay. Now, my later on, we'll move on to the tax relief, tax exemption and tax rebate, all those. Lah, okay. Control of sales of uh, goods and services. That means, for example, you see tobacco or smoke uh, or cigarettes. I it, the government uh, implement the tax. That means people have to pay more if they buy tobacco lah. That's why this will make people think twice lah. If I have to buy this cigarette, I have to pay more money. Is it worth it or not? Something like that lah. So you avoid people from buying lah. Okay, discourage people. Okay, and then financial tool to stabilize economy. That means, uh. Yeah, you use it to stabilize the economy. Lah. You need uh, money ma, to govern the country. So how is it used in your education? Lah? Build your schools, ah, healthcare, ah, social welfare, development, security, agriculture, infrastructure, transport, all this. Lah. Okay, now we look at the types of tax. Okay, we look at the types of tax. We have income tax, road tax tax, property assessment tax, quit rent, and also sales and service tax. Lah. Okay, don't worry. Okay, so far in exam, I never see they ask all this one. I never see like, oh, what you gonna do? Oh, what is the punishment? Semua ni, 1,000 ringgit, upper legal act there. No. Okay, so don't go and memorize this. I think it's not worth it. Lah. If it comes out an objective, it's only one mark. So it's not worth it. You go and memorize everything, all this. Okay, so... Uh, you just read and understand it lah. Okay, so basically income tax, what does it mean? Your parents earn income. Of course, every year they have to pay income tax lah. They have to fill in this form. They pay the income tax law. Uh, okay, keep the record and then payment lah. So who is collecting? Okay, this who is collecting is more important because in the, what is it called? In your, in our trial exam, got one question, they ask who collect the road tax. So ini lah, uh, JPJ lah. Jabatan Pengangkutan Jalan lah. JPJ akan collect lah. So, this one important lah. You have to know. Okay. So, for income tax will be IRB or uh, Lembaga Hasil Dalam Negeri uh, LHDN lah. Okay. So, tax evasion. This one you can read yourself lah. If you avoid tax, then how lah. Okay. So, another type of tax is road tax lah. That means, of course, if you have a vehicle, you have to buy road tax. Okay, must pay road tax before the existing road tax expired. So you see all this, you go, later you have a look at your parents' vehicle or you go everywhere, look at the vehicle, their front dashboard, uh, the screen here confirm will have this, uh, will have this sticker lah. This is road tax lah. And then there will be expiry date lah. Okay, 
So, must be uh, vehicles with expired road tax, okay, for more than one year must be sent to Puspacom, okay. Puspacom. What is Puspacom already? Give me a while. I forget what is the full name already. Puspacom is Pusat Pemeriksaan Kenderaan Berkomputer. Okay. Um, so, yeah, Puspacom and then if the road tax is not paid, the vehicle will not be allowed on the road. Lah. So, that means you see, if uh, what you see normally got police uh, like roadblock like that, that means maybe they will check lah, the sticker. If they see suddenly, A eh, got expiry date ready, exit ready, then they will pull you over lah. Okay, and then you have to pay the fine. Uh, you see, continually using a vehicle without valid road tax, you have to pay uh, not more than 2,000 ringgit lah. Okay, so who is collecting? JPJ lah, Jabatan Pengangkutan Jalan. Okay. Okay, property assessment tax basically is if you own the property lah or you own like a real estate like that, you have to pay lah. Okay, so who is collecting? Your local authority uh, like your MBSJ, MBSA, uh, all this lah. Majlis Bandaraya lah, MBPJ. Okay, this is property assessment tax. Quit rent is also the same except it's more to the land lah. Like agricultural land, farmland, corporate land, all this land lah. So it's collected by state land office. Uh, then you have all this. Okay. The last one is sales and service tax. This is SST lah. Okay. So SST is enforced on 1 September 2018 lah to replace GST lah. Okay. So this SST uh, got two parts. One is sales, one is service lah. Sales that means you sell the uh, goods lah. The barang, niaga, everything, grocery. Service that means like maybe your hotel service or maybe your restaurant service, all this lah. Okay, so sales tax is a tax levied only on variable uh, taxable goods lah. And then service tax is taxable service like hotel service, insurance, takaful, food, food and beverage, preparation, telecommunication and credit card lah. Okay, manufacturers or importers with sales value or taxable goods exceeding 500,000 per annum shall register. Okay, and then you have this one. Okay, you can read through ni lah. So who is collecting? Uh, RMCD lah, Royal Malaysian Custom Department or Jabatan Custom Diraja Malaysia. Okay. Uh, okay, so that's all. And then the consequences lah, what happened? Can you understand the different type of stack? Basically, it's in the name lah. Income tax, income law, road tax, the vehicle law, property assessment tax, property law. Ah, uh, quit rent is a bit different lah. Quit rent, you have to know lah. Okay, it's relating to the land law. And then you have sales and service tax lah. Okay. Yep, very easy. Easy, right? Is it easier than insurance? Or maybe later you look at the calculation, then you know already lah. Okay, now, uh, for this chapter, the hard one is only income tax lah. Income tax is not hard, but the process is more, there are more steps compared to the others. Uh, you see, there are more steps over here lah, compared to like, maybe, you see, uh, compared to this one, uh, road tax, you see. Compared to road tax, compared to, you see, the quit rent, so easy only, like that only. Uh, okay. So let's slowly take a look of income tax. So first of all, to calculate income tax, you must find the chargeable income first. Okay. What does it mean chargeable income? That means your annual income minus your tax exemption minus your tax relief. Okay. And then you calculate your income tax minus the tax rebate. Then, 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 and then only you find your final answer for your payable tax. So, income tax, you have a few process first. Okay, so the first thing is the chargeable income. Okay, so chargeable income is your income minus your tax relief minus your tax exemption. Lepas tu, you Cari income tax berapa. Lepas tu, you minus your uh, tax rebate. Okay, uh, you see, this is where students make mistake lah sometimes. Okay, and then only you have your income, payable income. Tax relief and exemption, you minus from the income. Okay, tax relief and exemption, you minus from the income. Tapi rebate, tax rebate, you minus from the income tax. Nanti we look at an example how to calculate. Okay. Total annual income includes all form of wages lah. What you receive lah. You work so you receive your uh, salary lah or your royalty lah, dividend lah, interest lah. Okay. Okay. What does it mean exemption? Exemption refers to all your personal expenses. Okay. That means personal punya. Personal. Like your gifts. What else they say there? Contribution to government, 
uh, state library, healthcare organization, this is called tax exemption. How about tax relief? Tax relief refer to items or expenses which are not taxed. For example, individual or family members. Okay. Uh, for example, employees provident fund, medical treatment, education fee. All this is not uh, taxed. Lah. Okay. So from this uh, income, tax relief and tax exemption, you can find your income tax. Now you look at this table. Quite a big table, but actually it's actually it's very easy one. Lah. Okay. So you move on first. Look at the tax rebate. It's given to reduce tax to be paid. Okay, so tax rebate is given to reduce tax re, uh, tax to be paid. That means from this income tax, you can have rebate. You boleh discount your punya income tax. Macam mana you discount? There are two. Okay, two types. You tengok kalau income tax is less than thirty five thousand. Betul kan? Ah, uh, less than thirty five thousand you can have a tax rebate of 400 ringgit. Ini sudah set. Tech, check, uh, check the chargeable income. If it's less than 35,000, you minus 400. Okay, later we look at example. Another one is zakat atau fitrah. If you pay zakat, it will be under tax rebate. Okay, look at example. Encik Cairo has an annual income of one to five three hundred, including allowances. It is given that the allowances and uh, amounting to one two three four zero are tax exempted. Okay. At the same time, he has made a donation to a library amounting to two thousand. Okay. The total tax relief, on the other hand, is two to five hundred. Calculate the chargeable income. Okay. So. You see, yeah. Okay, so you see, what is the tax exemption? You have one, two, three, four, zero, two thousand, and then your tax relief is two, two, five hundred. So you just take the annual income, one, two, five, three hundred, minus all this, you get eighty eight, four thousand six hundred. Ini yang kita boleh charge eighty eight thousand four hundred sixty. Then you look, okay, at the next example. Now we have to calculate income tax really, okay? Chargeable income of 47,531. Okay. He had paid zakat. Ah, zakat 280. This is tax rebate lah. Okay. So, chargeable income is 47,531. Okay. Now, how? You look at the table. 47,531 di mana? Here. You look at your mouth. My mouse here. It's this column. It's this entire thing. Okay. So, how? Minus 35,000. Okay, you minus 35,000, you find the, uh, the okay, uh, how to say? Like you find the base tax first, 600, okay? You look here, base tax is 600. Lepas tu, you take this amount, 47531, minus your 35,000 times 8%. That one will be your tax on balance, on the next balance. Okay, this one. Can you understand? How to refer to the table to calculate? Boleh ke? Oh, boleh ah. Okay ah, very good lah. Okay. So, your base tax plus your tax on the next balance is this one. And then, you have to minus your rebate. Remember, you have to minus your rebate. Actually, before we move on to rebate, you check here. Is it less than... Uh, okay, hold on. 600 plus 1030... Ah, okay, so you see, the chargeable income is 47531, okay? Is it less than 35,000? It's not less than 35,000, right? So you don't have to minus 400 for tax rebate, okay? You don't have to minus 400 for tax rebate. You only minus the zakat tax rebate 280. So you get this one ah, as your final answer. So he has to pay a tax one year, he has to pay the tax 1322.48 lah. Okay, okay. Now you look at the, another example. Mr. Chan had an annual income of five two seven seven zero. Okay, you have to calculate the uh, chargeable income first. So this one minus the three hundred, which is tax exemption, minus all this tax relief. Now, when you minus tax relief, you have to hati hati. Okay, individual minus nine thousand. Here you have to see the maximum limit is seven thousand. So can minus five thousand eight hundred lah. Okay. 
Here, maximum limit 3,000 can minus this one. Maximum limit 7,000 can minus this one. Okay. Let's say, for example, you see EPF, uh, this one, limit to 7,000. If here your amount is 9,000, you cannot minus 9,000. Nah. You cannot minus 7,000 only because that's your maximum limit. Okay. So after you minus all this, you see your total annual income, uh, sorry, your chargeable income is 31,970. Okay. And then you see chargeable income less than 35,000 ringgit. So later on, you have to minus 400 in the tax rebate. Okay. Sekarang, you dapat da, uh, your chargeable income. Then you find your income tax berapa. Okay. So, uh, 31,970, that means it's here. It's here. So, the same thing. Okay, it's here. Lah. Okay. So, the same thing. Your base tax, 150. Okay. 150 base tax. And then, you minus uh, 20,000 times 3%. Okay. So, your base tax is... 150 minus 20,000 times 3%, you get tax on the next balance, this one. And then your total tax is this one plus together. He doesn't pay zakat, but remember, tax rebate minus 400. Okay, this is set really, minus, must minus 400. So you he will pay one year only 109 ringgit 10 cent. Wow, very less. Huh? Hmm. What is monthly tax deduction, PCB and related calculation? Basically, PCB is like your deductible like that. Lah. You have to pay yourself lah. Ah, okay. So, PCB, taxpayer should make comparison between total amount of PCB and... Okay, let's say the tax you have to pay is more than your PCB. So, you have to make... Uh, you have to pay yourself lah, the extra, okay, to IRB. But let's say your PCB is more than the tax you need to pay. Then, uh, excess deduction will be refunded by IRB lah. That means you don't have to pay anything lah. Okay, so you look at this example. Annual salary, 74,000. Claim the following tax relief. Okay, other tax relief you have to minus, yeah? So, minus 9,000, minus 7,000, minus 1,325, minus 1,250. Okay, so you get 54,425. Oh, sorry, you have to minus your uh, tax uh, exemption also, so 1,000. Okay, and then, okay, this is 54,425. Okay, 54,425. Then you, jangan tengok PCB first. You just calculate annual income tax. Okay, calculate saja income tax. Look at chargeable income. Less than 35,000 or not? No, it's not less than 35,000. So, no need to minus 400. And then, he also didn't pay zakat. So, no tax rebate lah. Okay, zero. Now, look. 54,425. So, refer to table. It's here lah. Okay, it's here. So, base tax, 1,800. The remaining, minus 50,000 times 14%. Okay, times 14% over here. So, 619.5. So, his income tax payable is 2,419.50. Lah. That means every year, he has to pay 2,419.50. Okay, then you see, they want you to calculate, does he need to pay more income tax after the monthly deduction? So, PCB, one month pay 180 ringgit. So, one year have 12 months times 180 ringgit, you get 2160. Okay? 2160 is deducted from his income tax payable. Okay? But you see, his income tax is still higher than the PCB. That's why he has to minus and he has to pay himself 259 ringgit, 50, dollar, uh, 50 cent to IRB. Okay? Can you understand the PCB? Your income tax is higher than your PCB, so you have to pay the extra yourself lah. Okay, from here is go downhill already lah. So here is easy already, okay? So joint tax assessment and separate tax assessment. Basically, if husband and wife, you can decide if you want to do your tax assessment together, combine together or separate tax assessment lah. So you have to compare lah. So in this example, we will compare, okay? Mr. Rajan and his wife, annual salary. Mr. Rajan earns 53,000, his wife 57,000, okay? It, they each donated 500 to a government approved welfare organization, okay? And then this is the tax relief lah. Okay, now you see. Calculate the total income tax on Mr. Rajan and his wife by using joint tax assessment and separate tax assessment, okay? So we look at joint tax assessment, okay? Berapa income tax dia? 
joint tax assessment that means mr rajan and his wife com combined together okay so their total income together 110000 okay their total donation 1000 okay you focus on this column only ah, joint tax assessment okay oh you cannot uh, never mind. you focus on this column ah. oops are you okay come on okay so total exemption is 1000 okay now you take out tax relief individual 9000 so they have to minus 9000 only lah. okay because together ma okay lifestyle 2500 because the maximum is only 2500 okay life insurance plus together is more than 7000 so you can only minus 7000 medical insurance only maximum 3000 so you minus lah okay then you get 87500 chargeable income refer to this 87500 Go back here. Okay, 87,500 this year. Okay, so what is the base tax? 4,600. Tax on balance, minus 70,000 times 21%. So you see the total uh, tax will be, uh, the total tax is 8,275. Oh, yo. So you see, if they use joint tax assessment, they have to pay 8,275 ringgit per year. Okay, but if you use separate tax assessment, that means the husband only like that and the wife only like that. You see, total income minus the donation, lifestyle, okay, minus 9,000, minus 2,500, minus 5,830, minus 2,650. You only get 32,520 chargeable income. Okay, and then you see, chargeable income less than 35,000. So you can minus your 400 also lah, your chargeable, in, uh, your tax rebate lah. Okay, so 32,520, go back to table, will be here. Oh, oh okay, wait, uh, let me adjust again. Uh, will be here. Okay, will be here. So base tax 150 minus 20,000 times 3%. So you get your uh, total uh, income is this one. Minus the 400, so you will get 12560. So the husband only has to pay 12560. Lah. Okay, the wife also the same thing. You do the same thing only, then in the end you get 714 ringgit 40 cent. Total is 840. So, Isabel, which one is better to use? Is it the separate or the joint? Is better. The joint you have to pay 8000 plus, you know, for the separate total only 840. Which one better? Separate lah. You pay lesser lah. Wow, oh, you pay join lah. Then really uh, very foolish lah. That's a very foolish move. Okay. Okay, so you see which one is better. Okay, so separate tax assessment is more suitable because income tax payable is far lower which is 840 lah. Okay, uh, then here even easy really lah. Okay, road tax, how to calculate. Okay, so you see. Uh, motorcycle in Sabah and Sarawak. So, Mr. Uh, Chong owns a motorcycle engine capacity 260. That means here lah. Okay. For private use in Sarawak. Calculate road tax. Berapa? 30 ringgit saja lah. Uh, like that only. Habis. Okay. Tapi, you see, for car. Car is a little bit more. There are a little bit more steps in Peninsula. So, you see. Alan has two private cars in Melaka. One is 859cc. One is 1997. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. So 1997. Okay. So calculate the road tax for both of its car. Okay. So you see this one 859 for the first car is over here. So 20 only lah, his base rate. The other one 1997 is over here. So base rate 280 and then minus the 1800 times the this one. Okay. Times the 0 0.5. So you get your answer as. 378.5 lah. Total. The road tax. How about you memorize the table? This is like your normal exercises at home. Ah. Then at home, you just take picture lah. And then you look at your handphone lah. Oh, okay. Nah, like that lah. You don't have to flip here and here. Here and there. And lah, this is how you do what? Really what? For anything lah. For any subject or any exercises. Okay. Same thing lah. Property assessment tax also. The tax rate times the annual value law. Okay, so you see the example here, okay? Annual value 6580. Assessment tax rate 5%. So, berapa the tax? 
five percent times six five eight zero lor. So every year pay three hundred and twenty nine lah. But you see, calculate the property assessment tax payable by Mariani each half year. That means one year you pay twice. So you divide two lah. So every after six months you pay one hundred and sixty four uh ringgit fifty cent lor. Okay, easy right? Ah, quick rent also the same thing lah. 130 meter square. Okay, what is the rate? 0 0.43 ringgit for 1 meter square. So you times lah. You get 55 ringgit 90 cent. Easy only lo, like that only lo. Okay, can right. Okay, then the final one lah, sales and service. Okay, sales and service, you have to read the question, okay? For sales tax, the range is, uh, I uh, got there's a rate, but for service tax, it's confirmed 6%. Service tax, we fix already, government 6%. So, rental a room at a hotel, so laser 240 per night, okay? Two nights, so that means you have 480 ringgit lah. And then, you have to calculate service tax lah. So, 480 ringgit times 6%, so you have to pay additional service tax, 28 ringgit 80 cent lah. Okay. So, yeah, I think that's all lah. Then maybe, okay, you look at the, okay, problem has a chargeable income of 30,633. Look at here, okay. Uh, look at the tax rebate, okay. Chargeable income less than 35,000. So, you have to minus 400 for tax rebate lah. Okay. So, and then you pay zakat some more, 230. Uh, so, how much is Sabrina's tax rebate? Oh, Sabrina. <laughs> okay. So, 400 plus 230. So, you get 630 lah. Your tax rebate is 630. Calculate the income tax payable. So, how do you calculate income tax? Look at this, 30,633. Okay, go back table. 30,600, okay, here lah. So, uh, base tax is 150 lah. And then after that, minus 20,000 times 3% lah. So, you get this one. Okay, you get total is this one. And then minus your tax rebate, remember? So, one year, Sabrina has to... Uh, oh... Sabrina doesn't have to pay tax lah. Okay? Because you see, your rebate is higher than what you should pay. So you see, zero eh. Wow, so good lah. No need to pay tax oh. Okay, so we look at the final, uh, a few more examples, then we can end the class ready lah. Okay, so, uh, exam individual 9,000 tax relief and exemption. Okay, and then limited, okay, 6,000. This one donation library 500. Given that Encik Anafi's annual income in 2020 is 70,000, Zakat 500. So remember the rebate you have to minus 500. Calculate Encik Hanafi's chargeable income. How to find chargeable income? 70,000 minus all this lah. Okay, 54,500. 54,500 is more than 35,000. So you don't have to minus 400. Okay, by referring to the table, okay, 54,500 is here lah. So, base tax, 1,800, and then remaining times 14%. Okay, times 14%. So, you get total is this one lah, minus 500. Remember your zakat, remember to minus 500. So, you get this one lah, 1,930 for your income tax payable. And then, discuss the difference between tax relief and tax rebate. So, remember, tax relief, you minus from your annual income. Tapi, tax rebate, you minus from your income tax. Ah, that's why the zakat, zakat, remember 500, you cannot minus with this, ah. you cannot minus in, with all this, ah. you have to minus after you get this one, 54,500. Okay, okay, and then your final example, okay, this one is more to the electricity, lah. okay, 650 kilowatt hour of electricity, usage exceeding 600 kilowatt hour, you have to pay uh, 6%, uh, uh, what service tax lah? So two hundred plus one hundred, three hundred plus three hundred. So starting here lah, you have to pay service. Uh, you have to pay the service tax ready over here. Okay. So, uh, calculate values of X Y Z. Okay. So X Y Z should be easy lah. Okay. X is just uh hundred. This one the rate times hundred. So you get uh thirty three ringgit forty cent. Y also same thing three hundred times this one you get one five four point eight. Z is 50 times this one, 27 ringgit 30 cent. Okay, calculate total amount of payment which is not subjected to service tax. Not subjected, that means above this one, above this, which is from this to here lah. This, to, this three lah. Okay, so 4360 plus the X, 3340 plus the Y, 154.8, you get 231.8. Okay, 
and then calculate the service tax charge in the electricity bill in November. So this is your chargeable one. Z is the chargeable, which is 27 ringgit 30 cent times 6% service tax. So you get 1.64. Lah. So your service tax, you have to pay 1 ringgit 64 cent. Okay, that's all for this example. Yay, okay. So I think that's all. Lah. No more question, is it? Do you have any question? So, okay, feel free to ask me any question anytime. Okay, I think that's all for this class today. Lah.